Hi, this is Joan Conover. This is Seven Seas Cruising Association. It's our cruising host series heading south for snowbirds. And we have Dawn and Stephen Bell of www.blue.voyages.com. They are Seven Seas Cruising hosts on the East Coast of the US. They'll tell you something about their knowledge of both South Carolina and Georgia. Um, Hampton, Virginia is going to be your jumping off spot for snowbirds going south. Hampton's in the lower end of the bay for cruisers and boaters. All of the marine and service areas are near the waterside and your walking distance. They have a really nice website. You can get your reservations there and it tells you about the area. Now for charts going into this area, you're either coming south down the bay, you could be coming north, but normally south down the bay this time of year, or you're coming in from outside, coming into the Chesapeake Bay. You follow the markers and then you will go through the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel area past the Willoughby Bank. There's a lot of traffic, so AIS is a good idea. Uh, you can anchor on the south part of the bay, which is Willoughby Bay, it's skinny, or up by uh, Fort Monroe. Um, old uh, Point Comfort has an uh, anchorage there, or as I'm recommending, go up into Hampton, right there. This is a close up. You can see the approach going in. And I didn't stay very long on that slide, I'm sorry. Uh, amenities at Hampton Public Docks. We have the river, we have docks, we have the marine services. We have their floating docks. There are quite a few marinas in that area. They're all open with spaces. Uh, you may have to look a bit for catamarans, but there are some marinas that have room for cats. Uh, laundry and shower facilities, all the marinas have that. Uh, Breweries and restaurants and nightlife. I'll tell you, there's the nicest little brewery right off of the, the docks, the Hampton Public Docks. Absolutely wonderful. They have pizza and you can sit outside. And there's a hotel lodging adjacent to the docks. There's public transportation. There's Wi-Fi and there's marinas all over the area. There's Blue Water Marina. There's a customs dock. So there are plenty of marina spaces and there's areas to anchor. Uh, the docks. They're formally called the Hampton Downtown Public Piers or the and the Customs House Marina. You can stay at the waterfront. Um, Chesapeake Bay Magazine has an absolutely fantastic new article in August that tells you all about Hampton. So if you decide you were interested in Hampton, I go listen to Chesapeake, look at Chesapeake Bay Marina uh, Magazine and look at that for the August. And then I want to introduce you to John and Captain Stephen Bell of Blue Dot Voyages. And I'm going to stop my share and let them take over. And there's Stephen waving and there's Dawn. Um, I found some stories out, but I'm not going to share that. Uh, <laughs> and there are hosts, they are absolutely wonderful. Go to bluedotvoyages.com. You should see the videos and everything. Absolutely spectacular experts. And they teach people how to sail. They teach people how to use their boat, where to go. And I'm going to turn this over to Dawn. All right, and everyone should see the screen. Joan, do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Okay, great. So we're gonna take a moment to tell you guys about the area of the country that we absolutely love here on the East Coast. I've spent the majority of my life here on the East Coast, um, up and down it, back and forth, but basically a home base for me and it has been for quite a long time. Mostly, you know, just south of Charleston in that Charleston area is where I have been. But this whole area that we're talking about today, we're going roughly from Georgetown, South Carolina, all the way to St. Mary's um, down in the southern tip of Georgia, just before Jacksonville, Florida. And I'll point out a couple of things on that. One, we, you probably know, we often call most of this area in here the low country. So as you look at all these bays and inlets along this stretch right here, there's a lot of water that moves in and out of here with six foot tides, um, strong currents, lots of shoaling, lots of creeks, and lots of really wonderful places to see in here. A key factor about the coastline here is this is the section of the East Coast where it does tend to go, and you'll notice here, about 220 degrees to the south and about 40 degrees to the north. And that's a real key factor to think about when you're sailing this coast because people often on the East Coast really worried a lot about the north winds or the northwest winds 
And since we're on this coastline that essentially runs southwest, it's a really great coastline for those north and northwest winds. Um, you can be sailing 6, 10, 15 miles offshore and have a heavy north wind or a heavy northwest wind, and you're actually protected from uh, the wind wave effect from being the wind coming across the land. So that's a really nice aspect. You can have a strong northerly northwest wind at 15 to 20 knots or more, make a lot of speed and not have to deal with a lot of wind uh, waves, wind waves on that. So that's a really nice thing for it. Again, those tides in this area, six, four to six foot tides on a regular basis, every single day, twice a day. So you can have currents up to three knots. And you'll notice as we go along, some of these inlets are really long and you need to keep that in mind when you're trying to make your timing to get in and out of those inlets. Keep watch for those cold fronts as well, because as those come through, particularly in these winter months, you will find that wind that will clock all the way around 360 degrees. Uh, the prevailing wind primarily is from the southwest, but you'll always find opportunities to head south from the north uh, when it clocks around and you can have two to three days of that north-northwest wind, and that's great for making the speed towards the south. Um, last thing about this is some free, freeze protection is typically not necessary. I've never done it one time since I've been here in the Charleston, South Carolina area and south of here. So I never worry about it at all. And again, these temperatures, average temperatures in South Carolina, January lows in the 30s, maybe, uh, highs in the 50s, and then lower Georgia, we have uh, lows in the mid 40s and highs up into the mid 60s. But any given day, you can easily have 70 degree weather there. These are just a few of uh, pictures that we have taken during our activities here. So you'll see there's wonderful uh, fishing. The mahi on the right hand side was uh, prize winning. The uh, flounder at the right time of year, and, th and this is the right time of year right now, you can catch flounder. Um, there's a lot of oysters along the banks and we love to go out and catch some appetizers before dinner. Um, blue crabs is the other thing that we love to do. And uh, as anyone that has ever picked a blue crab, it is a ton of work, but it's, it's kind of fun and it's a good way to spend an afternoon. Yeah, these waters here, these very brackish waters in here, extremely salty brackish waters and the life in them is really astounding. So we love the shrimp, the crabs, the oysters. It's really great in here. I also wanted to point out that this whole area, there's unique activities here. Obviously in the time that we have today, we can't go through each of the different inlets and all of the different very specific activities, but overall, there's plantation tours available for you wherever you go. Rice, tea, tobacco, sugar, indigo, cotton, and take advantage of some of those because they're really, really interesting. And there's some surprises, you know, uh, when I think back to history class, some things that I've learned at these plantation tours, it, it totally conflicts with what I learned in school. So they're really worthwhile to go on. There are a number of protected wildlife preserves and state parks along the way and take advantage of those as well. Obviously, you know, those are free to use and a lot of them are actually only accessible by boat. And so you are there and it's like, it's your own private island, which is really cool. Oyster bed rejuvenation is happening in a lot of areas. So watch out for that and make sure when you are actually harvesting oysters that you're doing it in, in the right areas. Live oaks with Spanish moss that everyone loves are abundant in these areas. So look for those. Marshes with palmetto trees, maritime forests, the beaches and the tidal flats are only at low tide. We love low tide because you can go out and you can explore areas that you would think are, they're underwater most of the time. You would not even know the abundant wildlife that's on there. Sea creatures I've never seen before. So it's really wonderful. Um, historic sites and hotels abound. You know, if you're coming from the Northeast, you already know about these up there as well. But it's the same down here and they have a little southern bend to them. So of course, that's gonna be a little bit different than the northern climates. The low key, low country atmosphere down here, it's very different than the north, um, much more laid back. Um, and you'll find people being extremely friendly everywhere you go. Boating community is generally like that. 
as well, but in the South, it's even better. The Southern food, of course, don't miss the Southern food. Try everything you possibly can. And the Sea Islands, Golden Isles, they go by a lot of different names, but these are islands that are generally not inhabited. And so take advantage of that. There, you can pretend like you are a million miles away when you are just on the East Coast, but you're out in those aisles that no one goes to, and it's just great fun to be out there. So we're gonna cover quite a few of these inlets along the way. As I said, this is the low country, so these are um, rather treacherous inlets, although they're very well marked. Um, they are the shoaly entrances, again, with those heavy tides in them. So if you look on here from essentially New River Inlet at Myrtle Beach all the way down to St. Mary's Inlet in the Sound of Georgia, Southern Georgia, we're gonna cover each of those inlets real briefly and tell you some specific things about that area. Oh, sorry. So we mentioned the New River Inlet, which is um, north of Nir Myrtle Beach. And once you're on that Myrtle Beach strand, the New River Inlet is really the only place that you can go into. There's one more called um, uh, Merle's Inlet, which is a small little fishing village, but there's really not much in there. So if you go into New River Inlet, you can go the intercoastal waterway from there all the way down to Winya Bay. And if you're able to do that and you've got the kind of mast height that will put you down that waterway, I will tell you that is one really beautiful part of the waterway. You wouldn't think that being on the backside of Myrtle Beach, which is uh, about the most populated beach place there is in South Carolina, but it is a beautiful um, Black River forest with uh, beautiful trees in it. So that's a really great stretch. But on south of there is, of course, the Winya Bay, and it's a huge bay down there. Um, and you'll see that that Winya Bay entrance from the offshore side of it will take you inside of Winya Bay and then up to the small village of Georgetown. It's a very long inlet. The inlet itself to get inside is not too long, but it's 17 miles all the way up to Georgetown. So keep that in mind if you do decide to head up there uh, and you will definitely hit some tidal currents in there. If they're going in your favor, you're gonna make really great speed. If they're not, you'll probably lose about three knots per hour going into there. In February, I've been down that Winya Bay before as well, and that happens to be when the shad run. Um, shad is a wonderful fish that is taken for its row, and shad row is a really great tasty delight, which I personally love myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it so Don, much. <laughs> Don, Don, not so much. No. Uh, but those shad fishermen, they'll actually stretch their net all the way across the river, uh, coming down from that New River area, and they'll move it for you, but uh, rather grudgingly a little bit, they'll <laughs> move it for you. Uh, Stephen tells me a story where they actually shared the shad with him as he went through an inlet once so yeah and, and i got that first thing in the morning and fried it up for breakfast so uh -huh. that, that was really delicious so the charleston harbor i'm sure all of you are aware of the charleston harbor and many of you have been there for those of you that haven't of course the wonderful quincentential uh southern town of charleston south carolina with all the history that abodes there great place to go in extremely busy channel very deep water channel Lots and lots of heavy ship traffic coming in out of there. Um, so once again, AIS is very important. They will call you on the radio and ask you to move to one side of the channel or the other. Uh, this inlet's relatively easy um, from a current standpoint to get in and out of. Great anchorages on the southern side of the city. Uh, you can anchor to um, right off of the front of the battery too. Ding yourself into town and, and enjoy that great environment there in Charleston. Here's just some of the pictures that we've taken while we visited Charleston. You can see the first one is uh, the, the steeple in town, and this is right along the waterway. So you get a really good view of the city from um, where you're at on your boat. And of course, the, the, uh, the sunset that everyone will see. This is um, one of the most popular bridges over there. What's that bridge called again? Cooper River Bridge. Cooper River Bridge. Yeah. It's a span bridge, and it's just beautiful. You can't hardly see it here, but the sunsets against that are amazing. And then, of course, the ship traffic down below, and, and this is not unusual that you will see multiple, multiple freighters all at once. And there's great marinas in there, of course, too. You know, you have the city marinas that are on the southern side of the city, and then on the other side, you do have um, the Charleston Harbor Marina, which is great, and in fact, they've got lots of room for cats in there now as well. Catamarans. 
catamaran. It's not 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 <laughs> kitty cats. Not kitty cats. Right. So the Stono Inlet will be the next one down. I won't spend a lot of time on this. You can get into the Stono Inlet and out of it, and inside of there is the little small beach town of Folly Beach. Certainly a surfer beach. Um, uh, very quaint little beach village that you have in there. But I will tell you, this inlet is treacherous. It's not very well marked. The markers are not even on the chart because they move them so much and they move on their own so much, they won't put those markers on the chart. But you can see them, you can get in there, but I can just about promise you, you're gonna see six feet of water. So your draft, you know, if you're more than five feet, Stephen says, stay out of there. And so just to the south of that inlet too is of course Kiowa Island. I'm sure all of you have heard of that. It's a um, very popular island. It's um, uh, the rich and famous tend to go there as well. And of course it's great for the golf tournaments as well. Now this is uh, also interesting to know there are celebrities living. Charleston has uh, Bill Murray actually yeah, living there. And yeah, yeah. Uh, Kiowa Island, last we heard Oprah had a place here. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people have a place so, on Kiowa. Yeah, a lot of money in Kiowa. So if you go on that, if you look on that northern side and those back creeks in there, you can enjoy a lot of five million dollar homes. Yeah, <laughs> get your dinghy back there. Yeah. And the North Datisto Inlet is our favorite inlet, and that's where we are, as a matter of fact, right now. Um, and this is where I've spent an enormous amount of my life. So all of the back creeks in here, um, the small beaches that are on here, the uninhabited islands that are in here. We just absolutely love this area. Uh, when we come down here, first thing we do is go out into the river and we anchor out and we stay out there the whole time that we're here. So it is a really, really great place. You will be literally the only person anchored out at night most any time that you're in this area. Wonderful beaches to go back and forth to. Um, so we, we just like this area a lot. The Bohick at Marina is uh, right up the creek there and it's, um, it's a very quiet marina, uh, very reasonably priced as well. So we re recommend for people to take advantage of that a lot. Um, and we love Devo Bank. It's a uninhabited island. They actually do a lot of uh, turtle watching to save, save the turtles, help the turtles save themselves. Botany Bay, Privateer Point. Um, there's a little city called Rockville that has homes on it from the 1800s overlooking the river. Um, so just, a, a lot of really beautiful sights to see. And, and you can literally anchor in just about any of these small little creeks that you see in here and, and you will be by yourself and it will be absolutely beautiful. These are just some pictures that we've taken, our favorites. Uh, the top right was uh, right before a huge thunderstorm hit, but that's at the marina, it's at Bogut Marina and it's just, it just a gorgeous picture. The bottom one, of course, is, is uh, the river and the marsh and the different greens that you'll see throughout the seasons. They changed a lot from light green to dark green to gold. And it's, it's just really beautiful to watch them change. And high tide and low tide is very, very interesting to see the differences there as well. And of course, I love the bird life down here. Um, so I know just about every single bird that there is in this area. Um, so great for bird watching, great bird area. Wood storks are down here. Of course, the ospreys as they are in most places, but uh, it's never ending bird watching in this area. Here's some additional pictures. The first one on the top left, there's a eagle's nest right up there. I hope you all can see that. Um, but there, there's definitely an eagle's nest and it's huge. You, you wouldn't even think it's a bird's nest, but it is obviously. Um, DeVoe Bank is pictured on the, the lower left and a favorite spot of ours called Driftwood Beach on the right. Yeah, these are all places that are accessible. Uh, anchor your boat right near them and dinghy to them. They're really wonderful places. And then we have a huge inlet to the south of us, which is the St. Helena Sound. And in here is the South Edisto Inlet and the St. Helena Inlet. Um, you enter both of those pretty much from the same point offshore, but it's a long way down each one of those. Um, so once you make a decision to go to one or the other, that's where you're going to be. Um, and then to get to the other one, you would have to come all the way back out to the sea buoy and then re-enter the other side of it as well. But it is an absolute vast area, lots of shoaling, lots of sandbars in there, but plenty of room for any sailboat to get in and out of there. Um, and it, again, is one of those desolate areas that has 
these preserves, nature preserves of private islands that uh, no inhabitants on them at all. You can go there by dinghy, walk the beaches for miles, anchor out for the night, and again, you're all by yourself. So these are great places in here. The South Edisto is a little faster to get to, a um, little quicker to get inside. Nice state park that's in there. A little quaint little South Edisto town that's in there. And then to the south of that on the St. Helena Sound, it's a really long inlet getting into there. Um, there is places like Datau Island you can go all the way to. They have a wonderful marina. We went there recently and we were surprised at how well they built that back from a hurricane that they had not too long ago. Um, and they're welcome to have you, but it's about 14 miles to get all the way down yeah. into there and, and plan some time, maybe three hours for a sailboat to get all the way there and get back. And Donna, I'll let you tell them about Monkey Island. Monkey Island's great. Oh, uh, yeah. So Monkey Island, it's actually <laughs> Morgan Island is the name of it. And uh, this island is um, located right right here, right? Yep. And it seems to be cut off from any other landmass. So. They brought over about 3,000 monkeys from um, Puerto Rico a number of years back. And there's more information on our website about this, but um, you can go over there in your dinghy and watch for the monkeys. And they come out daily in the mornings. They, they have an automatic feeding system. So uh, if you go and they're feeding them, obviously you're gonna be able to see them. And they are, there's 3,500 monkeys on that little island. Yeah. So it's definitely a, a place to stop. It, it's really unique. Who would have ever thought that, you know, you would have this this reserve with 3,500 monkeys on it right here in the middle of South Carolina, but yeah, there they are. These are just some pictures we took. Obviously, um, it is very remote and uh, we, we love it. Yeah, this was, um, I think that was on, was this Otter Island? Yeah. Yeah. So this is side. this is Otter Island, which is on the St. Helena side of this sound. We loved it a lot. It was really great. That whole island, Otter Island, is a nature preserve. There is one private dwelling on it, and then they donated the rest of the land for a nature preserve. There's a ranger station on the back of the island. You can dinghy to tie your dinghy up there, and there's great hiking on the island as well as a beach that was forever. And then comes Port Royal Sound after that. So once you leave St. Helena, if you look sort of up into the apex of these two rivers in here, that's the small town of Beaufort, South Carolina. That's as opposed to Beaufort, North Carolina. Both sound, sound the, spelled the same, but they are totally different places. Um, that's the difference between a northern accent and a southern accent. <laughs> Buford is a great, great little town. Beautiful, beautiful little town, but it is hard to get to. So it's a long way up these rivers to get there by boat. You can get there without any bridges. So no matter your mast height, you can get there either from the northern side of it in St. Helena Sound or from the southern side of it in Port Royal Sound. But in Port Royal, there is a 65 foot bridge there and you'll have to stop short of that and dinghy from there. So if you're gonna go to Buford, it's more advisable to go there from the northern end of it. But keep in mind, if you can't make 65 feet, you're gonna have to backtrack to get back out of there. Um, it's also, of course, the famous area of Paris Island where we train all of our Marines. You can get um, from the Port Royal Sound, it's on the northern side of Hilton Head Island. Again, if you can use the waterway, you can go south on the backside of Hilton Head Island there and then traverse all the way into Calabogie Sound. But you do have to keep in mind a, a mast height on that of 65 feet. And then of course there's Savannah River. We won't spend a lot of time on this. Obviously a major shipping port in there. Deep, deep water channel, very straight and narrow. Lots and lots of ship traffic coming in and out of there. And frankly, you know, it's a long route just into downtown Savannah. You can go into downtown Savannah, but it's very industrial. Um, it does have the quaint little River Street area. Beyond that, it's extremely industrial with paper mills, uh, tank farms, uh, industrial process facilities. So all those tankers come in and out of there for that. But as you go into the Savannah River, you can quickly cut off to it. As you can see there on the chart that I drew, go up into the Calabogie Sound into Hilton Head. And from there you can explore Hilton Head Island. And then you can explore Defusky Island as well. 
both of those are great places to see, great southern places to see, and superior anchorage in both of those areas as well. And then we start to hit a couple of more big sounds as we go south from there. So um, we have, I think here we're talking about both the Wausau and the Asabal sound. Wausau is a very popular sound for very large yachts to go in and out of because it's a direct route to the Thunderbolt Marina. And the Thunderbolt Marina is a haul out station, a boat yard that takes on the big cruise ship. So we see what was the uh, Firestone well, ship we saw yeah, there? Yeah, uh, these are not commercial cruise ships he's referring to. These are no. the big yachts. Yeah, these big yachts. Firestone, how, how long was that? That was 132 feet, I, no, 130 yeah. meters that one was. Uh, beautiful sailboat, just the, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, these, these we went in there and, and we got hauled in there because it's one of the few places that can haul a cat. And we were just amazed at some of the yachts that we saw in there. So anyway, that Wausau Sound, is very easy to get in and out of, very well marked. Um, again, great anchorages in there. And then of course, it's north of the Wausau Island and we really loved Wausau Island because it was just gorgeous, long miles and miles of beach, uh, nature preserve. You can access that by dinghy, hike through the island and then go on the beach side of it as well. Great anchorages behind it too. So on the Southern side of that is the Asabal Sound and the Asabal Sound again, takes you on the back side of Wausau Island, or it takes you to the north side of the Asaba Island. Great, great inlets in there. We really loved being in there and we spent quite a, quite a bit of time in there. I think we were yeah. in there maybe March or so. It was really a beautiful time of year to be there. So we spent all of last winter either on the hard or in the Wausau and the Asaba Sounds area. Um, we, we just absolutely loved it. And if you do want to visit the city of Savannah, if you've never been, you definitely have to go. But this is the, the easy way to actually get to it. So you can pull into the Wausau Sound and uh, find a marina up there. We stayed at Bull River Marina. Um, and then you can just Uber over to the city of Savannah. It's not far at all. And you know, take advantage of, of all the culture that's in that city of Savannah watch the movie, uh, The Garden of Good and Evil, and just immerse yourself in that Southern culture. Yeah, some people, um, you know, I have to be careful how I say this, but we like Savannah better. I mean, the, yeah. the, <laughs> it's just a really gorgeous little town. Yeah. Uh, the squares that they have through the town was really pretty, so we enjoyed that a lot. And I'm actually a Northerner. You can kind of call me that. Born on Staten Island, New York. Lived in Jersey, lived in Pennsylvania. They kept getting me away from the ocean my whole childhood. Then we moved to Michigan, which of course has the Great Lakes. So, so the difference in culture between North Midwest, if you call Michigan Midwest, and Southern is is pretty. Yeah, my my family still questions how I am married a Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So here's a great photographs right here, and, and these are on that south side of Asaba, right? On the Asaba Sound. This this uh, tidal flats on Wausau. Yeah, that's so. Those tidal flats were one of my favorite pictures. Yeah. They were just beautiful, and they were full of hundreds of horseshoe crabs. Yeah. So it was really great to see that. And the bottom one is actually Bull River Marina. So we got there Thanksgiving evening and actually had a nice moonrise to, to view in the planets as well, Jupiter and Saturn, I think it was. Yeah, that was a great night. So then we move on down into um, more of the Georgia areas. And so we're getting into St. Catherine's Sound and I've got three of them listed here, St. Catherine's, Sapello, and Doughboy Sound. Um, and I listed these because they're all very similar. Um, they're easy to get in and out of, plenty of water to get in and out of them. And if you notice the islands that each of those surround, all of those also are natural preserves. They do have some dwellings on them. They do have some historical features on them, but they are really beautiful islands. And again, only accessible by boat. So there are no bridges to either one of these islands. Um, so I think there was the old Reynolds plantation is on there. Yeah. Um, so you can visit that. They do have some golf carts and that sort they, of they thing. They have tours of it. 
yeah, and tours, but that's really great. So these these are really gorgeous, gorgeous low country islands as well. So, you know, this is a great shot of what these inlets look like. If you look at all that blue inside of the shoreline there, that's all tidal flats. That's all that heavy rising low and high tides of that water moving in and out of there. It's in full of grassland, full of marshland, really pretty areas. So these are part of the Golden Isles I mentioned, of course. Um, there's not a lot of major cities in these areas, but plenty of anchorages and marinas as well. And then of course, St. Simon, we're gonna take off here Thanksgiving and head down to St. Simon. I've been in and out of there quite a few times myself anyway. Big channel, easy to get in and out of there. Um, great little area as well. Super Marina that's just inside of there, and that's where we're going to go for a while here come Thanksgiving. And then, of course, you have St. Simon's Island there, which is a very popular getaway island for a lot of the people in Georgia and South Carolina. And you have Jekyll Island, which is um, right there beside St. Simon's Island, too. And then Brunswick is not too far away, and I don't know if I mentioned it somewhere else along the line, the famous part of Brunswick and Kings Bay on the submarines. Nope. So the Navy submarine station is there. Um, in fact, that's the next inlet down is where they bring those submarines in and out of there. So St. Andrew Inlet, a great little inlet as well. Um, this one, as you can see, is very easy to get in and out of. Plenty of deep water in there. Again, you have the Cumberland Island National Seashore here. Just like the rest of them, gorgeous marshland in there wonderful wildlife, natural preserves, and great anchorages right inside of the inlet. So this one's a pretty quick inlet to get in and out of. And this is St. Mary's, which is the big uh, channel and the deep water channel. And I say deep because this is where they take the Navy ballistic missile submarines in and out of, and they go all the way up to the north. You can't quite see it on this chart, but Kings Bay is up in there, and that's where they have that naval uh, submarine base station in there. Um, this inlet is of course flanked um, to the north by Cumberland Island and we talked about that. And then to the south is Amelia Island and Fernandina Beach. Both of those are very popular areas, very popular uh, beach places to go to, but still quaint, um, still very comfortable, wonderful places to see and they're certainly worth your time in there. Uh, great marinas that are right there on Amelia Island. You can come into the backside of there and have plenty of places to either anchor or go to the marina for supplies or what you need there. So that is all the inlets. That was a lot very quickly. So if you do have questions, please reach out to us and uh, we'll try our best to answer them as soon as, as, soon as we can. Um, I wanted to provide just this last slide. This is a kind of synopsis of the different activities. And if you're considering one area or another or all of them, um, there are some videos that you can watch. There are some blogs with some more details on activities and. I uh, highly encourage you to take a look at those. Um, just to note, we do not make money on our YouTube site, so it doesn't matter to us if you go visit it or not. Um, you know, some people get um, kind of annoyed at that as, uh, as we do as well. So there's no ads when you go visit any of this. Yeah, this is strictly for you guys to come and enjoy this country that we love so much. We, we really like it down here and it is unique. Well, All right. John and Steven, this is to have been a wonderful presentation. I know that everybody's thinking the same thing. I did have a question that was asked um, by Frank Smith. He says, a cat with an 80-foot mast to get to Beaufort is the only way via Coosa River from Helena Sound. That is correct. You have to go down the Coosa River and there's no bridges on the way except for Ladies Island Bridge. Uh, Ladies Island Bridge is a bascule bridge, I'm pretty sure and they'll open for you. And then you'll be able to dock right there or anchor right there at the downtown marina. That downtown marina is a public marina too, by the way. So great place to be. And that's right smack okay. in the heart of downtown Buford, which you've probably seen a lot of movies from there. Beautiful little place in there. Yeah. And that is, that is Buford, by the way, not Beaufort. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a Buford and a Beaufort. And one is in North Carolina and one is in South Carolina. They don't match. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can you can get um, up very close to Buford from the Port Royal Sound as well, uh, deep water sound there, but you will hit a 65 foot bridge there that you'll have to stop short. So you really won't be able to anchor right off of the town. This has been absolutely amazing. Uh, anyone who is interested in 
seeing a rerun of this on YouTube, and I think a lot will. Um, it'll be posted on SSCA. I'll put a button up there so people can find it hopefully easily. And I want to thank you guys. This is absolutely wonderful. It's really sharing. Um, I've got another question here. Uh, oh, the broken Colston Bluff Bridge. Let people know. Ann Mullet said, let people know about the broken Colston Bluff Bridge. That I'm not sure of. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't. No. Um, something to watch. Anyone who's listening here, uh, broken Colston Bluff Bridge. That means there's a problem. If a, a bridge not working is not good for sailboats. So definitely that's something to check out. I will check it out afterwards. And we have uh, email addresses for people. If anyone needs to know anything extra from this, but we will be posting this. And be sure to check out their website, blue.voyages.com. And if you will drop your share, I'll put my share up. Okay. And what you, who have you been talking to is Don and Captain Stephen Bell, Blue Dot Voyages. And I'm serious. They really know what they're talking about. It's absolutely fantastic, the knowledge that they have shared with us. The next thing is a cooking contest, I bet. So it's something to do with the, the <laughs> crabs or the lobsters yeah. or the mahi-mahi yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I want to thank you for this. This is absolutely spectacular. I have some thank yous to give to other folks here. Um, if it'll work. Of course, maybe they never does, it never does work. Um, we have Nautic Ad, who has been our sponsor, who is willing to uh, fund our, our wall so that you can have these, these presentations for free. And Nautic Ad also offers two classes for free. So there is an opportunity there uh, to have a chance to do that, to uh, learn a bit more. We're, we're really appreciative of that. And, and then- Jen, I can just add to that. I, I recently did those classes and they were very good. So Steven's been sailing all his life. He didn't need them, but um, they were really helpful for me. And they were, they were challenging. I gotta say, they were very challenging. Well, we're getting asked more and more for classes and courses. And I don't know that Nautic Ed offers the courses that give you the certificates, but the knowledge they offer is really, really important for us. We're going to have a uh, November 12th Florida Bahamas uh, webinar, which will be similar to this one. Um, you can find everything at the U SSCA webinars at the U.S. Uh, 17th U area. We're working on that really quickly because this is, we just stood, stood the, these programs up and it's a learning experience for everyone. Uh, November 7th will be a luncheon up in Annapolis that anyone can join. November 12th, Florida Bahamas, like I said. Um, the 14th will be the, the annual meeting for SSCA. The 15th, we have um, Oliver Salinas Henry, who is going to be doing Canaries to Grenada. He lives between those two areas and he'll tell how people who want to sail to those two areas can make it. December 10th will be update for cruisers. We don't have the program fully fleshed out for that one yet. I may ask Donna and Stephen to stick their little tootsies in and say what's going on at that point in time if they can. But I just want to thank you. This has been an absolutely marvelous presentation and it's really appreciated. We hope we'll see you down at St. Simon's Island in Georgia. Yeah, be and, great. Um, Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. And we have another question up here. Um, that was the, the, okay, we have the bridge. We have the question. No one else has any questions. We probably are really okay there. And um, we appreciate all that you've done for us. There's a lot of clicking back and forth, but we appreciate it. And Stephen and Don, you have a wonderful sailing adventure the rest of the season. We don't Thank talk to you sooner, but I'm sure we will. All right. Thank y'all. Bye-bye.